Welcome back yet again. This is the final part for 4.3 on soils. We're going to start off with this science understanding. Cations absorbed onto the surface of soil silicates and aluminous silicates are in equilibrium and can be exchanged with the cations in soil water, which are available as sources of plant nutrients. Secondly, soil silicates and aluminous silicates are able to absorb H plus and release cations. We need to explain how cations on the surface of soil silicates and aluminosilicates become available to plants. We can say that soil is composed of both organic and inorganic matter. The organic matter can consist of microorganisms, plants and animal remains, which we call humus, as well as waste. The inorganic components consist of our silicates and aluminosilicates, and we can see that makes up a large component. There is also water and air that helps make up this mixture. Clay is the term that we use to refer to soil silicates and aluminosilicates. They typically are made up of sheet structures which are stacked to form layers. The surface of these layers typically have a very large surface area and are also highly negatively charged. This allows for the absorption of cations onto the surface of clay. This picture here shows us the structure of a clay or soil particle. We can see the extremely negatively charged surface and on that we have the adsorption of these positively charged cations. The adsorption of cations provides nutrients to the roots of plants that won't be leached away or washed away. What we can say is that there's a dynamic equilibrium that exists between cations that are adsorbed onto the surface of soils and those in the soil water or soil solution. During plant growth, we get this continuous movement of cations from the clay to the soil water and vice versa. When cations are in the soil water, they are then available for plants to absorb through the roots. We're now going to consider this example equation to look at how nutrients can be made available to plants. We have this dynamic equilibrium between potassium ions adsorbed to clay with calcium ions in the soil water or in solution, being in equilibrium with potassium ions in solution and also calcium ions adsorbed to the clay. Let's propose that plants take up potassium ions from soil water because it's what they need. What this is going to do is decrease the concentration of potassium ions in the soil water or solution. This is going to then cause the equilibrium to shift to the right to try and offset that decrease in concentration. In other words, this is going to favour the forward reaction. and In doing so, we're going to get more of the potassium ions adsorbed to the clay now going into soil solution. However, to do so, we need to essentially allow for an exchange where the calcium ions which were in solution now are going to adsorb onto the clay and take its place. This process is what we refer to as cation exchange, but we can understand that it is based around principles of dynamic equilibria and Leach-Italia's principle. This diagram can help us better understand how plants can actually help make some of these important nutrient ions available to them. This is a diagram of some root tip cells within plant roots. We know that plants, like other organisms, will carry out aerobic respiration and in doing so will produce carbon dioxide. These plant roots can release carbon dioxide which can react with water and produce carbonic acid. Carbonic acid ionizes and produces protons. These protons have a higher affinity or attraction to the surface of soil silicates and so this can allow for them to exchange places with calcium ions which can then go into solution and then can be absorbed by these plant root tip cells. The same process can be explained using this equilibrium reaction here where we have calcium and hydrogen ions in equilibrium between the clay and in the soil water or solution. When plants give out carbon dioxide, they ultimately are going to increase the concentration of hydrogen ions in the soil water. So this is going to increase. So we know that the equilibrium is going to shift to try and offset this stress and it's going to shift to the right. And in doing so, we get more hydrogen ions adsorbed onto clay, whereas more of the calcium ions adsorbed to the clay now going into solution so we can see this exchanging of places or this cation exchange that then makes these calcium ions available within the soil water which can then be absorbed by these root hair cells. This is the final science understanding for 4.3. Nutrient cations on the surface of soil silicates and aluminosilicates are replaced if the concentrations of H plus or Na plus in soil water become too high. 
we need to explain how acidic or saline conditions, i.e. high concentrations of H plus or Na plus, deplete the nutrient value of soils. We're going to first talk about soil acidity. So this is present when the pH of the soil is essentially less than 7. Uh, this can be caused naturally through the weathering of rocks, through acidic rain when carbon dioxide naturally dissolves in rainwater, and the cation exchange process that occur within soils. This can also be human-induced through the use of ammonium-based fertilizers and the emission of pollutants contributing to acid rain, such as nitrogen and sulfur oxides. Like with the previous understanding, we can use Le Chatelier's principle to explain the effect of increased acidity. We have this general equation here where we have hydrogen ions adsorbed onto clay and in solution in equilibrium with metallic ions in solution as well as adsorbed to clay. If we have an increase in acidity, this is going to increase the concentration of hydrogen ions in solution. So that's on this right-hand side of the equation here. We know the equilibrium is going to try and offset the stress by doing the opposite. And to do so, it will shift to the left to try and decrease the concentration of H plus on the right-hand side. What this will do is firstly increase the concentration of H plus adsorbed to the clay, as well as increase the concentration of metallic ions in solution. Now in terms of its effect, we would say that more cations which are previously adsorbed onto soils now leach into the soil water, which can make them available for plants to take up. However, it tends to increase the concentration of toxic cations like aluminium ions, it's important to note that aluminium ions are usually strongly adsorbed to the surface of soil silicates and they usually don't go into soil water to be absorbed by plants because they're not needed. This relationship can be summarized with this equilibrium process here where we have an equilibrium between the hydrogen ions and aluminium ions within the clay and also the soil water. One final concern is that these leach cations can be washed away during periods of high rainfall. This can result in a decrease in the amount of nutrients which are present within the soil as they've been washed away. And we can get compounds of nitrogen and phosphorus entering um, bodies of water and contributing to eutrophication as well. However, the main downside is that increased acidity will tend to decrease the nutrient value of your soils. As our final consideration, we're going to consider soil salinity. Soil salinity is a measure of the dissolved salt concentrations in soil water. This can be caused naturally through the weathering of rocks and rainfall, and it can be human-induced through land clearing and irrigation. Like with soil acidity, soil salinity can be explained using Le Chatelier's principle. When we're talking about increased sodium ion concentration, we usually refer to this as soil sodicity. This can be represented by this general equation. So sodium ions adsorbed to clay and in soil water being in equilibrium with metal ions in soil water and also adsorbed onto clay. An increase in the salinity or sodicity increases the concentration of sodium ions in the soil water. We know that the system at equilibrium will want to offset the stress by trying to decrease its concentration, and that's on this uh, right side here. So we're going to see the equilibrium shift to the left to relieve that pressure. This is going to increase the concentration of sodium ions adsorbed to clay, and also increase the concentration of metal ions that go into soil water. So this is a very similar process to looking at how acid rain works. The effect of increased soil acidity includes swelling, and that's because we get this removal of adsorbed calcium and magnesium ions. This weakens the attraction between the layers of clay, which then cause the clay structure to be compromised. This is because there is an exchange of cations of the calcium and magnesium with sodium ions. And sodium ions are larger and less positively charged um, than the calcium or magnesium ions. And so this weakens the aggregation of the clay particles. Other effects include uh, a restriction in the movement of water and gas. And it also means that plants are unable to penetrate the soil and grow. Another indicator of sodic soil is that you get this formation of a crust that forms on the surface of your soil. To combat against soil sodicity, gypsum is a compound that's typically used to alleviate it. This primarily consists of calcium sulfate. We can explain how this works by considering this equilibrium process here, where sodium and calcium ions are now in equilibrium. 
the addition of gypsum is going to increase the concentration of calcium ions in the soil water, which is on this side of the equation. So we know that the system is going to try and decrease its concentration and it's going to shift to the right to do so. So that means that more of those sodium ions are going to now move into the soil water and essentially be washed away. And we have the adsorption of the more positively charged calcium ions onto the clay. It's going to help uh, allow for the soil to aggregate and it's going to help reduce those issues of swelling and things like soil dispersion, which is the structural collapse of the soil itself. That concludes our work on subtopic 4.3 on soils. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.